I love traveling with Amtrak, man. What's up, guys? I'm Q, and this year, Bring Me and I are partnering with Amtrak to visit several Black History landmarks in New York, Philly, and DC using the Northeast Regional Rail Service. So right now, I'm in Brooklyn. Shortly, I'm gonna have the Weeksville Heritage Center to check out one of the first settlements filled with free black people. I'm super excited to go over there and meet Dr. Coverington and really educate myself on black history. Let's get to it. Dr. Carvington, nice Thank to you. meet you. Good to meet you, welcome. Could you tell me a little bit about Weeksville? Weeksville was started in 1838, 11 years after the abolition of slavery in New York, and it was really started to give free blacks the opportunity to vote and participate as full citizens. The founders of Weeksville knew that, bought land and started selling it to black people. So after that happened, we started to have a critical mass of folks moving here. The actual houses themselves are original. So these date back from the mid 19th century. It's like a yeah. little time machine yeah. that gives you some flavor about what it was like to live as a free black person in three different time periods. I'm excited to check them out. Sure. Let's get into it. What era would this have been in? So this is about 1860s, 1870s. So this would have been a house that family would have lived in, probably some type of laborers. It really gives you a sense of the size. Think of it as a simple life, a simple existence. But you know, overall, Weeksville is a very complex community because education, self-empowerment is so important. You have things like this, the Freedman's Torchlight. Freedman's Torchlight was interesting because it not only communicated news of the day, it yeah. also would help people learn how to read. So it's also an institution, something that's established, it's going out regularly, it's making connections between people. And all that leads or builds the fabric of Weeksville as a community. So this is the 1860s, 1870s era. What other era houses do we have here? So this is the house that represents the 1930s. A little like it's set for a larger family for sure as in comparison to the last house. In comparison to the last house, you can see it's way more developed. Indoor plumbing has heating, it has electricity. So it's a very different kind of existence. When we walked in, you would have seen the modern day appliances of the time. And this family would have been one of the kind of bedrocks of the community. So what's on the second floor? I'm curious. Let's check it out. This would be a child's room, obviously. You have the doll. These are actually toys that have been adapted or changed to be black dolls because gotcha. they didn't have access to those at the time period. This looks pretty modern and it feels familiar, but you said there's more. There's some newer stuff you guys had here at Weeksville. On the other side of the campus is the arts an education building. So, Dr. Carrington, this place looks amazing. Where are we at right now? We're actually inside Weeksville Heritage Center. This is the arts, culture, and education building. I love the windows, I like the light. The aesthetic is based around a West African riff. It's good to end up here because you get a 360 view of Weeksville. We've been to the historic homes. Coming into this building that was built in 2014 really brings us to the contemporary, what we do now, the arts, the culture, the programming that we do, our outreach to community members. We go back to that idea about oasis, free space, and institution building for, for the black community and all that takes place here. Dr. Carrington, this is awesome. This is a beautiful space. I love this artwork up top. I really hope people can also come here and enjoy it as well. Q, thanks for your time. Appreciate yeah. you coming here. Absolutely. Respect, please come back. Don't Definitely. make it your last time. And uh, thanks for coming. Definitely. Talking to Dr. Carrington over at Weeksville was really enlightening. Being able to see how some of the first free black settlers in Brooklyn lived was just eye-opening, to be honest. I learned so much there. One of the most interesting things I learned about was the Freedmen's Torchlight. And I think it's a great example of black people coming together and trying to build up not only themselves, but the community as a whole. Next up, we went to the African Burial Ground National Monument, and we couldn't show the remains out of respect for the people who passed away, but it's a place you can go and just be appreciative of what we have now. The site is the burial ground of 15,000 African American people from the 1700s. Some of them free, but most of them enslaved. I'm glad I got a chance to check this place out because it's so peaceful, it's so beautiful. The artwork alone speaks volumes. Our last stop in New York was the site of Seneca Village in Central Park. The park itself is beautiful. It's a place I would love to go ride my bike every single day, to be honest, if I lived in New York. Knowing that a community of mostly black people was forced out despite trying to escape discrimination is just sad, but I'm glad the park still has a history there for you to look through. All right, guys, so I'm in Philadelphia right now, getting ready to walk into the Lest We Forget Museum of Slavery. I know it's gonna be pretty intense, but it's gonna be worth learning about, and I'm super excited to be here, so let's see what we have to offer. My name is Gwen Ragsdale, and I'm the executive director of Lest We Forget Museum of Slavery. I'm J. Justin Ragsdale, and I'm chief curator. I'm actually the founder. I began to collect all these things, and here they are. This was the first shackle that my husband collected. He actually found it in his uncle's trunk. My husband, as a boy, was quite curious about it. 
but his Uncle Bub would chase him away every time he tried to uh, open it yeah. or touch it. So after Uncle Bub died, found that shackle in it, and it was that shackle that inspired him to want to collect more slave shackles that you see before you today. This goes on your ankle and the guy next to you. You can't move without him. This is the shackle that they would put on you. The dogs could hear this. Now, you must remember that the slaves, they weren't exactly as stupid as people thought. Mm -hmm. And what they would do, they would pack this thing with mud. So how many enslaved Africans were taken out of that? You could never know because some of them were thrown overboard, some of them were, were jumped overboard, some of them mm -hmm. died on ship, they threw the bodies over. That's why the sharks followed the ship. If the sea could give up the dead in it, you could build a bridge that would stretch from the coast of Africa to the coast of South Carolina on the bleach bones of black folk that were thrown overboard during the Middle Passage. Wow. That's what I always said. I always like to end our presentation by sharing with you how blacks have contributed greatly to American society. The next time you go on the internet and you type in a URL with, with, that ends with .com, you can thank this man, Emmett McPherson. Katherine Johnson, she worked for NASA for years. Do you know that many of the astronauts wouldn't even go into outer space until she checked all their figures? Mm -hmm. You may have seen the movie that was made about her called yeah. Hidden Figures. Then there's this man, Guillaume Bluford, first black man into space. Mae Jemison, first black woman in outer space. This man, Dr. Mark Dean, he worked for IBM. He was one of the prominent black inventors of the, of the laptop computer. This grandmotherly looking woman, one of the inventors of GPS technology, Dr. Gladys West. We should know that we have contributed greatly to American society. It's important that we recognize that what I am sharing here with you today is not black history, it's American history. It's important that we remember the legacy of slavery, lest we forget. So overall, I think the biggest lesson I learned today was that, you know, even though we've come so far, still a lot of things that need to change. And there's still a lot of things that were happening back then that are happening now. Being in Philadelphia has been amazing as well. This is the first time I've ever held shackles in my hand before. That feeling is different. Right now I'm at Liberty Bell and also the president's house, which is very interesting because Liberty Bell is a symbol of abolishing slavery but at the same time is right next to the president's house, which was a quarters for slaves. I'm very hopeful for the future of our country, but yeah, we definitely have a long way to go. So I'm wrapping up in Philly today, gonna be headed to DC. I'm super excited to see the Lincoln Memorial, MLK Memorial, and of course going to Ben's Chili. Let's go. So I just got to DC um, at Union Station. It's an amazing train station. I'm feeling well rested, I feel good. I feel like I'm ready to get into this day, so. How are you doing, Virginia? I'm Quentin. Hello, Quentin. Welcome. How are you? I'm great. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and Ben's Chili Bowl? Ben's Chili Bowl has been here a very long time. I came from Virginia. My husband came from Trinidad. We met, fell madly in love, wanted to be married. He wanted to be self-employed. He'd worked his way through college by working in restaurants. So he felt he knew the restaurant business. And I was ready to join him and let's find out what I can do with the restaurant business. And the biggest thing you got to worry about when you're opening a restaurant is the ideal location. This was a segregated community back in the day. It's called Black Broadway back in those days. It was the entertainment center for African Americans. So this is the perfect location? Yes, as a matter of fact, the, this building itself was an old silent movie theater. We had all the jazz clubs, the music halls, the theaters, everything right here on this Black Broadway street. And of course, you know, Howard University is walking distance from here. So it was a thriving, thriving community. We opened on August 22nd, 1958. We knew we wanted to open a place that was gonna be part of a community. I'm a people person, I love people. Uh, during the Civil Rights Movement, we were here. I heard you met a lot of people during the Civil Rights Movement, is that, is that right? Well, we met a lot of people every day. We also had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Martin Luther King. He was planning his march on Washington. He had a satellite office a couple of blocks up the street, so whenever he was in town, he'd stop by Ben Chilibo and sit down and have a conversation with me and wow. talk about his dream, which was just very thrilling. What was it like knowing Martin Luther King? You know, he was such an amazing man, just uh, his old statue just spoke of integrity, soft-spoken, comfortable in any setting, and a passion to help others. He brought 250 
thousand people to protest the injustices of African Americans. They were from all walks of life and all colors. That day that he gave that I Have a Dream speech, just a wonderful, wonderful, inspiring day. And we did have some progress. We passed the Civil Rights Bill. In 1965, we passed the Voting Rights Bill. In 1968, Dr. King was assassinated. Somebody runs into the door and says, Dr. King has been shot. No way, no way. Not our wonderful nonviolent leader. People were coming in crying, just expressing their sadness. After a while, that sadness turned to frustration. The frustration turned to anger. And an uprising began so bad that the mayor had to call in the National Guard. Wow. Curfew was put in place for three nights. Ben's Chili Bowl was the only place that was allowed to remain open during those three nights of curfew. They want some place for well, city officials, the police department, yeah. even activists were coming because all the action was taking place here. This was the African-American community. This was home. They'd come here and play a little checkers and have dinner and sit around. If someone came to us with a problem and we could solve it, we did. Well, Virginia, it was great to meet you. Well, thank you. I'm excited to try some of this chili. I think you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> all right. Have a seat and we'll bring it to you. Here you go, brother. Welcome to the greatest show in America. Man. Thank you, sir. No problem. It's tasty. A little messy. It's how it's supposed to be. So I just wrapped up here at Ben's Chili in DC. This has been a great experience. Uh, it's been cool getting to know Virginia, talking a little bit about the black history in DC, the things she's been through, the things this establishment has been through, and of course trying to food. That was obviously good too. It's fire. Getting a chance to check out these memorials and really pay my respects to all the hard work that both MLK and Lincoln put in for me to be where I am today. I'm very hopeful for the future of America and our civil rights. I feel like we have so far to go, but I feel like we're on the right path and I'm just looking forward to the future. To start it off in New York, checked out Weeksville. It was really awesome seeing the different housing that we have between all the different areas. And the fact that they kept that community reserved and these houses reserved was really amazing. Getting a chance to check out the African burial ground, really interesting to see. A lot of the photos are very jarring, but it's just our history. You gotta attack it head on, and I feel like that's what the African burial ground museum did. And then the monument outside was so peaceful. It was so much beautiful artwork out there. And then we headed to Philadelphia and talked to Gwen and Jay Justin over at Let's we forget. I feel like this is the perfect way to end it off. Ben's Chili was amazing. I'm happy I got to ride Amtrak from city to city. Gave me a chance to really sit back and reflect on all the things I learned at these historical landmarks. Super thankful for Amtrak for hooking that up. I'm happy you guys decided to take the journey with me and I'm looking forward to the next adventure.